Hoskins? Here. Esslinger? Here. Beck? Here. Eichel? Here. Fitzwater? Huff? Roberts? We have four present, three absent. We do have four present and oh, actually five. five, five present now um, and two absent. So we do have a quorum. The first agenda is we will hear House Committee substitute for House Bill 1038. Representative Christ. Proceed when ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee for hearing House Bill 1038. For the record, Brad Christ, District 96 in St. Louis County. I feel this is an important bill that could generate positive economic development and workforce development, so I greatly appreciate the consideration. <clears throat> the Intern and Apprentice Recruitment Act is self-explanatory in the title of the bill. It incentivizes Missouri businesses to increase the number of internships and apprenticeship opportunities in the state. It's twofold. There's an internship gap in Missouri, and then two, it doubles down on our strength in apprenticeships. We have tremendous universities in our state that create a strong pipeline of in and out state undergraduates. However, we're a net exporter of too many of those. Data shows we lose roughly about 20,000 every year. Our top two metros, St. Louis and Kansas City, have lower internship participation rates than our surrounding peers, such as Nashville, Indianapolis, Minneapolis, and Columbus. Increasing the number of internships and apprenticeships in Missouri is important to retaining talent that we track through our universities, considering national data shows 70% of those internships receive offers and over 75% of those accept those offers. On the other hand, we're top five in the country for apprenticeships with over 3,000 completed apprenticeships in the state last year. Again, I think we should double down on this effort and become number one. Overall, incentivizing the internships and apprenticeships will result in full-time positions in the state contributing to the much-needed talent recruitment and retention, especially during the talent wars post-COVID era. So a high-level high outline of this bill is it's a, a total $1 million tax credit. It's $1,500 credit per intern or apprentice. A business can claim up to 9,000, so six interns or apprentices. And we made it that way so a, a corporate couldn't come in and blow the whole tax credit out. And, hire 400 interns at a, at a large corporate. So it's, it's really tailored for small, medium, and large businesses to utilize. It incentivizes only newly created internships or apprenticeships. So we look back over the three previous years and account for only net new internships that can apply for this credit. And the intern period is 60 hours per month for two consecutive months, and we, up, we just updated the uh, apprentice period from 144 to 2,000 hours of instruction. There will be comprehensive annual reporting by the Department of Economic Development, and it will sunset in six years. With that, happy to take any questions. Senator Beck. Yeah, so uh, good afternoon, Representative. So the, you did change the hours on the apprenticeship because I had a conversation with the senator from the second. We, ch yeah, we changed it from 144 to 2,000. 2000. I don't know if it's actually in this committee substitute you have we just changed it on the Senate bill that went through the house I and committee have, I have the regular bills so I don't have the substitute on me so um, no I just want to make sure that got changed because that was one of my concerns because I didn't understand 144 hours is nothing uh, in the scheme of things 2000 is is basically a working year um, you know that you would have somebody and we talked about that so uh, but I just want to make sure okay yes thanks Senator Esslinger okay First up to testify in favor of House Bill 1038. Proceed when ready. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman, members of the committee. David Jackson, registered lobbyist for Greater St. Louis, Inc. Want to go on record and support. I, I think as the representative mentioned, we just heard this bill last week, the Senate companion on this uh, in this committee. And we have we are a big exporter of undergraduate students who come here from out of state and come to our colleges and universities uh, and then uh, return back home to their other states or take other job offers in other states and the data is pretty clear and correlating uh, that if kids do stay here for internships that uh, many of them accept full-time positions and become working members of our economy here and so this is a small step to try to uh, retain that workforce talent 
Um, and to, to your question, Senator Beck, yes, that uh, we worked with the uh, Department of Higher Ed, and I know they were talking to, um, uh, I think, U.S. Department of Labor on the uh, definition for a qualified apprenticeship to match those hours. And so it's not reflecting this bill yet because we got that information after this bill had already been passed out of the House. But in all the different bills in language moving forward, we're working on that is being amended to reflect that. So thank you for your feedback and input on that. Senator Beck. Yeah. And, and so we had a conversation about the intern hours. Do we think those are sufficient? Because those seem very, very fairly low, too. Or are we okay with those? I mean. Yeah, I think the 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 internship hours are set at 60 hours. Uh, so, you know, you're, it, it's a, um, you know, for basically a, a two-month, you know, internship, a summer internship, you know, as a minimum uh, to meet there. And that's a minimum wage, you know, for that uh, pay. I think, you know, some internships may be longer you know they may actually employ them longer um but that's just the minimum threshold to meet for the credit on that um but um i mean the, the it, that piece is still currently 60 hours but happy to which you're, that you're looking at 120 hours roughly during the summer for this to take take effect uh, i'm sorry what you're looking at roughly 120 hours for the summer for this to take effect yeah okay thanks any further questions for this witness Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Next up, testify in favor of House Bill 1038. Good afternoon. Kara Korch is on behalf of the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry, also in support. I know we've heard this, I think, a few times in this committee, um, so not to echo what David already stated, but uh, especially on the apprenticeship piece of this, we have pretty long-standing policy to expand access to apprenticeships. Those are kind of the non-traditional career training pathways, but are incredibly vital for the state to hopefully increase our workforce supply. Uh, so for these reasons, we are in support, and I can take any questions you may have. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Next up, testify in favor. Mr. Chairman, Shannon Cooper today representing the Greater Kansas City Chamber of Commerce. We just want to go on record in support of the legislation. Our Kansas City employers find this as a, would be a very helpful tool to get some of these young folks coming in, seeing what we have to offer, and hopefully get our hooks in them and keep them there after they graduate. So be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thanks thank for you. your testimony. Next up, testify in favor. Good afternoon. Thank yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. David Pierce, the University of Central Missouri, and we are certainly in favor of the bill. Uh, anything that we can do to promote more internships for our students and students around the state, it's a good thing. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Next up, testify in favor. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, David Oberfeldt on behalf of the Associated Industries of Missouri and the Missouri Retailers Association. I could just say that my daughter's internships, it was incredible the doors that they opened and that anything we can do to improve them would always be good for all the students. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. Anyone else here to testify in favor of House Bill 1038? Seeing none, anyone here to testify in opposition of House Bill 1038? Seeing none, anyone here? here to testify for informational purposes only for House Bill 1038. Seeing none, Representative, do you have any final concluding remarks? That concludes the hearing on House Bill 1038. I now move that we go into executive session. Do I have a second? I do have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. We are in executive session. We have several bills that we're going to go into executive session on today. Um, and I know I've had the, and some of it's changed because of some last minute requests, but I, I appreciate uh, Josh uh, as well as my staff uh, making, trying to make those accommodations. So the first we'll bring up for exec session is Senate Bill 720. I move that we, uh, I move that we bring up Senate Bill 720 before the committee. Do I have a second? I do have a second. This bill is before the committee. Uh, Senate Bill 720 is the bill I presented last week. It establishes a work opportunity tax credit, which authorizes the taxpayer to claim a tax credit for wages paid by the taxpayer during the tax year to an individual who is in a targeted group, which is fined uh, by the federal work opportunity tax credit and who is employed in the state. I move that we do pass Senate Bill 720. Do I have a second? 
I do have a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senators Hoskins, Aye. Esslinger, Aye. Beck, Eichel, no. Fitzwater, Huff, Roberts, three. By your vote of three aye and one no, you have voted to do pass Senate Bill 720. Uh, the next one, I move that we bring House Bill 200 before the committee. Do I have a second? I do have a second. This bill is before the committee. House Bill 200 is one that we heard last week, filed by Representative Francis, that adds Perry County to the German Heritage Corridor of Missouri. I move that we do pass House Bill 200. Do I have a second? I do have a second. Any discussion? on adding Perry County to the German Heritage Corridor. Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senators Hoskins? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Beck? Aye. Eichel? Aye. Fitzwater? Huff? Roberts? Four. Four, yes. By your unanimous vote of four to zero, you voted do pass House Bill 200. Uh, the next one we have up is, I move that we bring House Bill 774 before the committee. Do I have a second? I do have a second. The bill is for the committee. House Bill 774, filed by Representative Gregg, modifies regulations on mines, including electrical insulation before, opening, for, before being able to open a cave to the public and increases the annual inspection fee from $35 to $100. I move that we do pass House Bill 774. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on House Bill 774? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senators Hoskins? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Beck? Aye. Eichel? Aye. Fitzwater? Huff? Roberts? By your unanimous vote of 4 to 0, you voted do pass House Bill 774. All right, next up we have, uh, I move that we bring House Bill 713 before the committee. Do I have a second? Second. I do have a second. This bill is before the committee. Uh, House Bill 713 filed by Representative Reedy modifies provisions relating to the assessment of motor vehicles. And so we do have a, a series of, of some amendments and plan on offering the bills that we've discussed in this committee and then rolling this into a Senate committee sub. So the first, I have an amendment and I move for its adoption. We are adding in the language from Senate Bill 8 filed by Senator Eigel. Senator Igo, would you like to explain the amendment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is the bill that we perfected off the Senate floor that is currently in fiscal oversight right now. It creates a 10-year um, horizon depreciation schedule for vehicles uh, under personal property tax. It reduces the, uh, reduces the assessment rate from 33.3 to 31 percent. It also adds uh, farm equipment to that. And if I could, I'd, I'd actually add, uh, I talked to Josh about this. Uh, there was a concern that for the farm equipment amendment piece, that by going to a 10-year depreciation schedule, there may have been years uh, that actually would lead to a slight increase. Overall, it was, a, it was a reduction, but I don't want there to be any years. I think it would be a very minor um, adjustment to make the depreciation schedule for 
farm vehicles only to go down to five, and I think that would eliminate that problem. Okay, so first we'll have a vote on the amendment to the amendment. As a combined amendment? Okay, okay. just as one amendment. So any discussion on the amendment from Senator Eigel? Yes, Senator Esslinger. Great, great question. So the farm equipment is on the agricultural schedule right now. So we'll basically have a separate depreciation schedule for five years for that agricultural equipment, and then it will un leave untouched the 10-year for vehicles. Any for Senator Beck. So what's the, what's the fiscal note on this? Senator Beck. So, Senator, what's the uh, fiscal note on this bill, on this amendment? Um, the, the fiscal note, yeah. uh, the original fiscal note that we have perfected on the floor was about $110 million. That was for the cost of reducing the personal property tax assessment rate from 33.3% down to 31. Um, the value of the farm equipment change uh, under the perfected version was about ten and a half million dollars. I expect that to be slightly higher if we move that down to a five year, uh, but I, I don't I don't expect it'll be much more than the original ten million dollar amount. Uh, the kind of controversial point is that when the bill came to the floor, uh, there was an unknown fiscal note. Um, just like there was an unfiscal, unknown fiscal note for having a 15 year depreciation schedule, uh, somewhere between the perfection of the bill the very next morning, uh, fiscal oversight at, at the direction of the governor came up with a fiscal note that indicated there could be a, somewhere between a three to five hundred million dollar fiscal note on top of that just for the vehicle piece. Of course, when we heard this bill, which was 15 years instead of 10, that was almost the, that was the exact same language and it had an unknown note. So I don't believe that that fiscal note uh, is either justified or accurate. Any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of adoption of the amendment? Oh, Senator Esslinger. I just want to make a comment that yes. I'm hoping that before we get to where we finally pass and whatever that we actually have, the actual, you know, what will be the result of the fiscal impact? So I had, I had a conversation with Senator Crawford about this, and she has made some inquiries, some additional inquiries with the uh, fiscal analysis folks to try to get exactly what that number truly is. Uh, we were hoping that we would have that information uh, before we came in here, but unfortunately with this probably being one of our last hearings of the year. We, I understand that, so. and I won't have a problem supporting it coming out of committee, but, I understand. Have, but yep. when it gets to the floor, I really want to have a, a reliable, I mean, you've got a pretty good gap between 10 million and 200 some odd million. Uh, understood. All right. Understood. Thanks, Senator. Yes, and Senator Esslinger, I will also say that and I know whatever we pass out of the committee, it will have to go to Senate Committee on Fiscal Oversight, and so they will have a, a revised uh, fiscal note as well. Uh, any other discussion on Amendment 1? Seeing none, all those in favor of the adoption of the amendment say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes ha appear to have it. The ayes do have it. You have adopted the amendment one. We will roll, roll this amendment into the committee substitute. Uh, next, amendment two is Senate Bill 93. This is the corporate and personal income tax cut. Uh, this is the language from my Senate Bill 93, which reduces personal and corporate income taxes with triggers. Uh, I think my staff has provided a summary of Senate Bill 93 uh, for you as well. This is the Senate substitute. Any discussion on the Senate substitute that is offered as an amendment? Amendment number two. Seeing none, all those in favor of adoption of amendment number two say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. You have adopted amendment number two. We will roll this amendment into the committee substitute. Amendment number three is Senate Bill 203. This is Senator Moon's Department of Revenue fix. 
This is the language from Senator Moon, Senate Bill 203, which requires Department of Revenue to refund sales and use tax assessments when the Administrative Hearing Commission or Court of Law finds negligence or incorrect information by a DOR employee caused the issue. Uh, we have heard this bill in this committee, and it actually has been voted out of this committee, but not turned in. Any questions? Senator Esslinger. Is this the wedding venue uh, case? Okay, thank you. Yes, it is. I think this one's been vetoed two or three times, I think. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. So I, yes, I, I, think, I think that there has been some issues with this. But yes. Actually, for, for clarity, I may be able to help there. It's the reason it was vetoed is because they didn't have the, the authority to actually fix it, so this fixes the problem they had to fix it. I believe that's correct. <laughs> Senator Igle. Senator Essling, I think you're, you're talking about when it was vetoed out of the budget, right? Because, yeah, they, they tried to put it in the budget and it got vetoed. I don't know that this language in a standalone bill has been vetoed. Oh, it has been? Okay, it has been vetoed yes, last year. It's, it's always gets vetoed. So, so we got some work to do with the governor's office, that's for sure. It sounds like a good piece of legislation to put in this bill then. Yes. It sounds like it's fast track. Um, any, any further discussion on amendment number three? Seeing none, all those in favor of adoption of this amendment say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. You have adopted amendment number three. We will roll this amendment into the committee substitute. Uh, now I have amendment number four, which is Senate Bill 513, 513 sales tax exemptions on boat dock rentals. Uh, this is the language from my Senate Bill 513. This is a Department of Revenue. Uh, request to exempt boat dock rentals from sales taxes will help alleviate some of the confusion by having all boat dock rentals taxed the same way. This does not include the beginning farmer's language that we voted out on Senate Bill 513. Any discussion on the adoption? Seeing none, all those in favor of amendment number four signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. We have adopted amendment number four. We will roll this in amendment into the committee substitute. We have uh, one more, amendment five, which is House Bill 356, uh, Representative McGurl's uh, taxation bill. This is the language from Representative McGurl. This included modifications from business income deductions, ESOP income tax deduction, and also retirement benefit deductions. And uh, like I said, you've got a summary on it as well. Any discussion on amendment number five, which is House Bill 356, we heard in this committee. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. We have adopted amendment number five. We will roll this amendment into the committee substitute. I now move that we adopt the Senate committee substitute for House Bill 713. Do I have a second? I do have a second. Any further discussion on the House Committee substitute with those five amendments? Seeing none. All those in favor of adopting a sit Committee substitute say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The, the ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. You have adopted the Senate Committee substitute. I now the move that we do pass Senate Committee substitute for House Bill 713. Do I have a second? I do have a second. Any further discussion on the due pass motion? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senators Hoskins? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Beck? No. Eichel? Aye. Fitzwater? Huff? Roberts? Senator Roberts votes no. Nope. And by your vote of three to two, you voted do pass Senate Committee substitute for House Bill 713. All right, the last one um, I'd like to exec on is House Bill 1038. That's the bill that we just heard. 
Uh, it is virtually the same as, I believe, Senator Schroer's bill that we heard last week. Uh, so I'd like to move that we bring House Bill 1038 before the committee. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? The bill is before committee. Uh, House Bill 1038, filed by Representative Christ, is the bill we just heard, establishes the Intern Apprentice Recruitment Act. I have an amendment, and I move for its adoption. This is the language from Senate Bill 92, which creates the Rural Access to Capital Act that came through this committee. Any discussion on the adoption motion of Amendment 1? Seeing none. All those in favor of adoption of the amendment say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. You have adopted Amendment 1. We will roll this amendment into the uh, Senate Committee substitute for House Bill 1038. I now move that we adopt the Senate Committee substitute for House Bill 1038. Do you have a second? I do have a second. Any further discussion on the Senate committee substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the Senate committee substitute say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. You adopt the Senate committee substitute. I now move that we do pass Senate committee substitute for House Bill 1038. Do I have a second? I do have a second. Any further discussion on the do pass motion? This is the, yes, this is the bill that we just heard that is very similar to Senator Schroer's that we heard last week. I think it's the exact same thing. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senators Hoskins? Aye. Esslinger? Aye. Beck? Aye. Eichel? Aye. Bitswater? Huff? Roberts? Aye. Five ayes, zero no. By your vote of five to zero, you have voted due pass Senate Committee substitute for House Bill 1038. Uh, with no further business coming before the committee, I move that we move out of executive session. Do I have a second? second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. We are out of executive session. Uh, this could be our last hearing. We'll see. We have two weeks left, so we'll see. We'll see what happens, but. Um, I make a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a second? second. I do have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. As appear to have it, as do have it, we are adjourned. Thank you.